As argued by Edelman, where queerness represents an othering, modes of sexuality can become non-threatening identities, which can be used to find a place in society without challenging hegemony. Edelman notes that homosexuality within limited contexts has begun to shed connotations of queerness and is being accepted into the mainstream. The Doomed Generation and Love, Simon are two very different films which both represent subjects experiencing queer desire in societies hostile to the expression of queerness. This video essay will argue that the Doomed Generation constructs a queerness untethered to sexual identity, while Love, Simon constructs identity as a rejection of queerness. Looking at ways both films directly address the audience, the framing of homophobia, and the broader film world. Love, Simon opens with Simon explaining his identity to the audience, asserting his normalness. I'm just like you, except I have one huge ass secret. By asserting his difference from the audience, he splits them between straight viewers, taking his statement at face value, and the non-straight viewers forced into an oppositional reading. Direct address always places the audience in a privileged position, however Simon further privileges the gay audience, thereby reinforcing the audience's in-group identification. The Doomed Generation opens with the title card, a heterosexual movie by Greg Araki, the title being a signature of Araki's films. This title opens questions on the nature of identity. What can the label of heterosexuality apply to? Where in a subject is that label held? Are the events in the film sufficiently heterosexual? The questions prompted by the film aren't tied to in-group identification, thus priming the audience for a wider, more structural interrogation of queerness. Love, Simon represents queer marginalisation as the act of rogue, although non-violent, individuals within an overall supportive public. The plot of Love, Simon focuses on Simon's coming out. The film takes for granted that Simon must be closeted, as Simon states, And honestly, I can't even really explain why. Deep down, I know my family would be fine with it. Or maybe it's that there's not that much of high school left, and part of me wants to hold on to who I've always been, just a little longer. Judith Butler has argued that it is the figure of the closet that produces this expectation and which guarantees its dissatisfaction. After being outed, Simon discusses an almost phantasmic difference with people. And I knew that if I told you that everything was going to be different, I really wanted things to stay the same. A fact that Simon's identity is important simply because it is, reinforcing its own existence. The film lends some credit to the closet being safer, Simon experiences one act of homophobic mockery after being outed, but it bears no weight on the narrative or Simon's character arc. Rather, confronting Martin who outed him immediately afterwards, Simon says that's supposed to be my thing, and you took that away from me. It returns to the self-fulfilling importance of Simon's identity. Homophobia in society exists on the outside of Simon's journey, around the more important journey of self-discovery and Simon's identity. The doomed generation depicts anti-queer sentiment infiltrating every level of society, from individuals to media to government, which manifests in constant physical violence and threat. When Jordan and X's sexual tension reaches a tipping point, that violence catches up to them, punishing their queerness, in the form of neo-Nazis who attack the group and kill Jordan. The violence in the doomed generation is far-reaching and fatal, with no one there to help. This violence is apathetic to personal identity, it doesn't matter how Jordan or X identify, it matters that they have committed a transgression against the heterosexual norm. Writing about Burn the Bridges, Junior Kroll argues, the film depoliticizes homosexuality by positioning the historically and geographically meaningful Zacatecan landscape as background for the character's budding relationship. Similarly, Love, Simon's typical American setting allows sexuality to be understood as part of any typical child learning their identity, depoliticizing and in turn de-queering it. The doomed generation rejects setting, existing in a world with very little internal logic. In a film labelled heterosexual, the doomed generation challenges the very nature of existence and experience. As Edelman wrote, the efficacy of queerness, its real strategic value, lies in its resistance to a symbolic reality. The doomed generation, while outside a real world, exposes the experience of violence. Unmasked from the symbolic realm of politics, where a heteronormative assumption places homophobia and sexuality behind the signifier, the doomed generation characters assert their right to another sexuality. Where sexual identity devoid of action can invite homophobia, it is the queer acts themselves that promote direct violence. Love, Simon consistently places identity first as the ultimate question of Simon's sexuality and places that identity neatly and non-confrontationally within the heterosexual world. The doomed generation, however, ignores sexual identity and strips back the forces that construct it, thereby undoing an identitarian view of sexuality.